Hello and welcome to this Total Education Media Production and you'll notice today we're outside looking in the beautiful daylight. That's because we're here to talk about nature in Blade Runner and while you may think that's a bit of a contrast because there's no nature in Blade Runner, I want to draw you back to the idea of romanticism initially and the beauty of nature. The romantics, like Mary Shelley, would have talked about how nature is refreshing and important to the human soul. And this is what Ridley Scott directly contrasts in Blade Runner. He contrasts nature as we see it today and around me and in the background to a place, an initial panorama of bleakness and darkness, a cityscape that's stricken of all nature completely with great plumes and of flames and smoke. It looks like basically hell on earth. And we get that amazing long wide shot which shows us as we pan in this city where it's completely devoid of nature. So why does Ridley Scott do this? Well, probably we have to go back to context in many ways and have a look, think back to the 1980s when he created this film and before. Now we know that the original story comes from a novel by Philip Dick, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? And many of the ideas in Blade Runner come directly from that. So in that period of time, when Ridley Scott was creating this film and read the book, there was great concerns on Earth about how the world was going and how the environment was going to be shaped in the future. So when Ridley Scott thought about the world in 2019, 2000, what he did was focus directly on what would happen in the context of the 80s. And we're talking about things like acid rain. We're talking about global warming even then, although it had a different name. And we're talking about planets and places of the planet that's looking to destruction of nature through overuse by man. So what Ridley Scott does is he extrapolates that sound, uh, that noise and that world and that bleakness of it and moves forward into the future and gives us the world that we see in Blade Runner. A world where there is no nature. We are completely devoid of nature and nature has to be created. So this nature we talk about in Ridley Scott's Blade Runner, what is it and why is it there? Well, it's a world that's changed vastly from the world that we see here today. There is no grass, there is no water, there is no birds in the background. What we've got in Ridley Scott's film is bleakness and a world changed completely. We only ever see the sun once and that's when we rise above that film of pollution that's in the city. We have to go to Tyrell's great pyramid in the sky to see the sunrise and even then he blocks it out. You'll notice in the film two other symbols that I can talk about on the way through here. The filtered light, it's always artificial. The use of fans and all those sorts of things to move air because there is no proper proper environment anymore. You notice down, down where on the street level it's completely dark all the time and always raining. And this is the, the chance of a world gone mad. And what happens is it's a resonation from man playing God. And when man plays God, things go wrong. And so what happens when things go wrong is that the natural order is destroyed. And we see that with the replicants. But we also see it reflected in nature, where there is no sun, there is no light. There are all the things that we come, are used to and expect in life are not there anymore. And that's also affecting how people live. You notice the decay in the buildings. Nothing's new anymore. It's all gone because everybody's moved off world. And in those first five minutes, we see that world and we see the ads for going off world and anybody who can get off the planet has got off the planet because it's not a place where humans want to live and we've created these replicants to, to ensure that we can survive in space. So how in a film does man get in touch with nature? And I think Ridley Scott does that in several ways. So what, what is nature in Blade Runner? Well Blade Runner is Partly the animals that we see, and these are created, and initially we see that right from the very start. When we go to Terrell's place, we see the owl, and we know it's not real because of the eye. And Deckard asks if it's real, and Rachel says, of course not. As if the expectation is that there wouldn't be anything real left anymore at all. What else do we have? We see animals throughout. We have one animal as a core and integral part of the detective element of the story, with Zora's snake, and how he tracks down the snake through the scale, he goes to the maker because it's got a serial number on it. And so 
nature's that. And we see many other examples of nature through there when he goes to the market, when he goes to the bar, and we see the ostriches walk through and the tiny horse and all those created things because what Ridley Scott's saying there and the value that he's trying to get across to you is that nature is valuable to man and when we lose it we need to create it to get back to that sense of, of ownership of nature because we are as humans part of nature and we need that connection so the romantics such as Mary Shelley Byron Coleridge all those sorts of people would say that nature is at the core of our humanity and an essential part and I think Ridley Scott does the same thing in Blade Runner by, by showing how when we destroy nature that it's a ruination of ourselves and a corruption of ourselves as much as a ruination of the planet, although that's important too. What else do we see in nature? I've already talked about the sun, I've talked about the rain, and there's some elements of, of dreamlike quality in nature that he tries to say. Now, off-world, of course, is not nature as we know it, and there's, there's no real trees and grass, as I've said before in the film, but what we get is is the image of the white dove at the end and that's much discussed by critics as we see that some critics argue that it's a real bird other critics argue that it's not a real bird can there be any life left on that earth or is it all created and that's something that you need to decide for yourself when you watch it my personal opinion is that perhaps the dove is real and it is white because it does offer hope it is a significant and direct contrast as it flies off into that smoke encapsulated sky it doesn't really matter what you think. The other element of nature is a more mystical one in the film, and that's the unicorn. Now, the unicorn appears in one specific dream-like scene, but it also appears as a little paper mache model, not paper mache, origami model that Gaff makes. So what is the link there? Is our roots and our origins in nature? I think that's what Ridley Scott's trying to say here, and again, that's another value that he would have share with the romantics, certainly, that we need that connection. It doesn't matter if it's a real connection or a fantasy connection. We need that connection to nature because nature is important to us. And while the unicorn is a mythical creature of hope, isn't that what nature gives us? It gives us hope. I mean, people go back into nature, as the romantics would suggest, to refresh themselves, to renew themselves, and get a feel of that sort of the old hippie phrase of back to nature. And I think it's very important that we notice that. So what is the result of Ridley Scott's world when he destroys nature? What sort of people are we producing? So when we talk about the kind of world that Ridley Scott's created, we need to think about a bleak world, a somber world, a world of blacks and whites and, and, and shades of gray only. The color comes from neon. The light's artificial, and I think Ridley Scott makes that very clear throughout the film. There's no natural light, and I think that changes every, the way people live. The diurnal range is gone completely from the film. We see no day, we see no night. It's like a land of perpetual darkness, lit and imaged by neon and advertising. And that's the materialism in the world, and I think partly along with that lack of nature comes that materialism and consumerism that we see so clearly. It's a world of screens, it's a world of advertising, it's a world that we don't really necessarily want to live in, and certainly they don't by moving off world and using the replicants to colonise. But what other values does Ridley Scott try and portray when he uses this in Blade Runner? The lack of nature shows, and I think, certainly, a decline in man's ability to manage himself. And I think Terrell is the example of this, and if you watch the other video that we've done on the characters in Blade Runner, and Terrell's character is clearly delineated in that, so I won't go back over that here, but I do want to make a reference to it in the fact that Terrell is the ultimate corruption of nature. He's the ultimate corrupter of nature, and he certainly is portrayed as a corrupt influence in the film. We don't feel any empathy or sympathy for him when he dies and he, the nature of his horrible death is in some ways rewarding for us because he has destroyed our world he has destroyed nature his whole thing is commerce materialism and i think that's what's made the world like it is and ridley scott certainly comments that's not a good thing when we look at the world of blade runner it's not a positive world at all and i don't think ridley scott has anything positive to say about blade runner except in the fact that at some times as Deckard shows at the end with Rachel and his love for Rachel, that 
even if you know we're replicants our humanity still comes through and our humanity is certainly seen in the way we relate to nature and that's extremely important if we look back at Blade Runner specifically and what happens in that film we see that man's searching for something all the time and what are the replicants searching for they're searching for the key essential part of life and isn't that our nature deep down inside that we search for life and when we think about nature it's also about human nature we could extrapolate it that far it's not just about the beautiful background that you see in the film we're making at the moment it's also about our, ourselves and, and what's at our core and isn't that human nature and what we are and how we react to things and I think that's obviously portrayed through the film by the the way he shows the replicants and the way the replicants strive for life and the way that Rachel and Deckard at the end go off in a sense of hope because I think nature and Ridley Scott shows that with the white dove and the unicorn is all about hope and that hope is what keeps us going and keeps us striving and it's a world that's portrayed where there is little hope where we see people on the ground level anyway crowded insecure don't communicate all the things that form part of human nature are not there anymore and that's a really really sad thing and I think Scott portrays that and those values certainly link back and hark back to that romantic era era where nature was important and I think Ridley Scott is in some ways a capital R romantic heart not necessarily romances in Rachel and Decker but a capital R romantic where he feels that we need to keep in touch with the things that are important to us rather than just be motivated purely by commerce and greed and materialism and I think that it's one of the successes of the film that it still rings true today is that those values that he portrays in that film are still very relevant to modern audiences and we relate to that and that's why the film has been successful for now for going on three or four decades is because those specific forms are very important to us and we think about what it means to be human what are the values that we have what are the what is the essence of our life and I think he does that through talking about nature finally to, to finish off I'd like you to think about how he does that through the techniques of the film and I've talked in this lecture very quickly about the variety of techniques and we'll certainly go through that in another video the specific techniques in Blade Runner but as far as nature goes here I'd like you to think about how the initial scene opens up the film and portrays that horrible bleakness and darkness how all the cityscapes are always crowded and neon and move between black and dark and there's lots of shadow used in the film and I think losing the diurnal range and making the world sort of a polluted capsule really insulates the film in many ways and sets it way into the future and if we ignore the date start that he gives us at the film which was a long way off in 1982 and I know modern, modern, modern audiences don't think that's particularly relevant now but if we ignore that time stamp on it it could be anywhere in the future and it could be our world certainly and I think audiences appreciate that and that's another reason why the film's kept fresh and modern in many ways so in conclusion we should probably think about just a couple of things we should think about how Ridley Scott uses those techniques to portray the natural world and the changes in the natural world we should think about how he portrays some of the characters in it and make our own opinions about that there's no right or wrong we should look at the way he uses the dove and the unicorn and the relevance of those and we should look at the way that Ridley Scott created that world and a future world where the environment has been disturbed and what effect that has on the people that live on the planet and the characters in the planet and I think if you sort of work out those things and get them organized in your own mind you'll have a very good grasp of what he does think carefully and hark back to the that romantic era um, and those sort of poets and authors of that period of time and what they believed in and I think there's a core running through Blade Runner of that romantic spirit so thank you for watching another one of our videos I hope you've enjoyed the new outdoor shoot Thanks to Ben the cameraman and sound man for doing all that stuff for us and getting it all set up. Don't forget to look at the last slide today after the lecture finishes, the takeaway slide. There'll be some really relevant points there for you to jot down and think about. Um, don't forget to visit the Total Education Centre website. You can get some more lectures on Blade Runner there. Please click the button down below, like us, leave a comment, ask me any questions. Thanks for your time.
Bye-bye.